Hello, everyone. My name is Fran Chen Chen Lisa Huang. Today, I'm here to talk about some research done by myself and collaborators at UT San Diego. In my presentation, I will talk about live programming, its use in CS education, and how we investigated the impact of using live programming in the CS1 course. Live programming is a paradigm in which immediate feedback is provided to the programmer each time the program is modified. Let's look at the given example. Immediately after the programmer finishes typing out the entire program without having to run the program, they could know that the runtime values of variable a is 10 and b is 20 from live programming. If they edited the program and changed the assignment of a from 10 to 8, they could see that the runtime values of a and b are immediately changed to 8 and 16, respectively. As you see, live programming environments always show the programmer how their code is being executed at runtime. The programmer could directly use such information for their programming needs without additional effort because it has already been generated for them by live programming. Therefore, live programming can be especially useful in programming education because the information it provides could potentially help with debugging and tracing, which are among the most cited difficulties in programming faced by novice programmers. However, since live programming visualizes runtime information at each and every change of the program, it poses a risk of information overload and could make programming overwhelming instead. The notion of live programming is also one additional thing to learn, while the pile of concepts to be acquired is already high for novice programmers. To understand the impact of live programming on computer science education, there have been smaller scale studies in and outside of the classroom, as well as one larger scale study conducted outside of the classroom. However, to our knowledge, there hasn't been any large scale study that examines the impact of live programming in a natural classroom setting. And our work aims to fill this hole in the research literature. Our contribution is the following. We conducted a study where we investigated the impact of using a live programming environment in a large classroom setting. Specifically, we used projection boxes as the live programming environment, and we used the Intro to Programming in Python course with 237 students at UC San Diego as a large classroom setting. Note that because we did the study in the fall 2020 offering of the course, both the course and the study were remote on Zoom due to COVID-19 restrictions. Our study aims to address the following research questions. How does using projection boxes in the lab affect test scores after the lab and durations of each task? In addition, what are students' perceptions of live programming in our case, projection boxes. Now that I've talked about the context of our study, I'll introduce what we did. We used two programming environments in our study, an online in-browser editor with projection boxes, which we refer to as PBS going forward in this presentation, where runtime values can be examined inside these boxes. And the exact same online editor with no projection boxes, which we refer to as PB no, where students examine their code by clicking a run button at the upper right corner of the interface to see an output box showing standard output and or error. The Intro to Programming in Python course has a mandatory weekly 50 minute lab, and we ran a study across four different labs, a lab on for loops or lab F, a lab on while loops or lab W, a lab on testing or lab T, and the lab on dictionaries, or lab D. The labs were in weeks three, four, five, and nine of the academic term, respectively. For each lab, we assign students to groups based on the times of their Zoom sessions, and each group used either PBS or PBNO. Here are the profiles of groups one through four, and the color scheme I'll use to talk about which environment each group used in each lab. In lab F, group 1 used PBS and group 2 used PBNO. In lab W, we kept the group assignments but switched the environments they used so that group 2 used PBS instead and group 1 used PBNO. 
In lab T, the group assignments remained the same, but everyone used PBNO. And finally, in lab D, we assigned students to group three and four, where group three used PBS and group four used PBNO. I will now talk about the reasoning behind the group assignments for each lab. In lab F, we used a two by two crossover design to measure differences in students' knowledge after the lab between the groups. In lab T, we used an AA test to determine any pre-existing differences between the groups, so everyone used the same programming environment. And in lab D, we would like to measure students' knowledge gain on dictionaries during the lab, so we adopted a pre-test, post-test design and reassigned groups. Now that I've talked about what we did in the study, let me tell you how it was done. Each lab follows roughly the same procedure with some variations due to the different experimental designs I just introduced. In this slide, I would use four different colors to represent each of the four labs. The arrows you now see represent labs F and W, respectively. The procedure for these two labs are the same. Students started the lab with accessing the environment through their browser. Then they watched tutorial videos of how to use the respective environment before starting the programming tasks. The tutorial videos would remain accessible to them as they worked on the tasks. After the tasks, they did a post-test where they answered multiple choice questions on topics covered in the lab. Finally, they commented on their experience with the environment they used in the experience survey. By lab W, all students had used both PBS and PBNO, so they were also asked to compare the two environments. In lab T, where everyone used PBNO, there were no tutorial videos. Students started programming right after setting up the environment in a browser. At the end, they answered multiple choice questions on concepts covered in the lab in a post-test. There was no experience survey at the end because PBS was not used. Finally, in lab D, because we used a pretest post-test design, students completed a pretest before programming. The pretest includes multiple choice questions on concepts of dictionaries that have been covered in the lecture, but not in any lab exercises or homework assignments. After the programming tests, students completed a post-test covering the same concepts tested in the pretest. At the end, they filled out the similar experience survey to the ones before to comment on the environment they just used and to compare PBS to PBNO. We collected the following data throughout the procedure. We collected test scores from the pretest and the post-tests, measured the time students spent on each task to collect task durations, and collected Likert scale ratings on the environments as well as open-ended feedback from the experience survey. Now, I'll talk about the results of our study based on the data we collected. First, the effects of live programming on test scores. We ran three two-sided t-tests to compare test scores between the two groups of students in each lab. For lab F and lab W, we compared post-test scores between the group using PBS and the group using PBNO to see if PBS caused any impact on the knowledge after the lab. For lab T, where both groups used the same environment, we compare post-test scores between the groups to detect any pre-existing between group differences. And for lab D, we compare the pre-test, post-test score differences between a group using PBS and a group using PBNO to see if PBS caused any impact on the knowledge gain during the lab. For all of the t-tests, we set the threshold to be 0.05 and all the p-values are beyond the threshold. In other words, we found no statistically significant differences between the groups in any of the tests. Which leads us to our first takeaway. We observed no pre-existing differences between the groups using PBS and PBNO. PBS caused no difference in their ability to understand the lab. And PBS caused no difference in their knowledge gain on Python dictionaries. Then, the effects of live programming on task durations. 
We also ran t-tests on all the task durations for each task and used the same threshold of 0.05 for p-values. In this table, we present all the tasks of which the p-values are less than 0.05. In other words, in these tasks, we observe statistically significant differences in task durations between the groups using PBS and PBNeuro. Let's look at the first two rows of the table, which show you task 4 of lab F and the mean task durations of each group on this task. You may observe that, on average, the group using PBS spent less time on the task than the group using PBNo. And this pattern is true for all tasks in, in this table. In fact, among all the tasks in all the labs, we observed that this pattern only exists in some code tracing tasks. And our takeaway from the task duration data is the following. We found that students using PBS completed some code tracing tasks more quickly. Recall that we collected test scores, task durations, as well as user ratings and feedback data from the labs. Now that I've talked about the findings from test scores and task durations, I'll talk about what we found from the ratings and feedback. First, the environment ratings. At the end of a lab, students first gave two ratings to the environment they just used through a five-point Likert scale. How the environment helped them understand the lab and how difficult it was to use the environment. We conducted Mann-Whitney tests on both rating items in each lab to compare the ratings from students using PBS and PBNo. We used 0.05 as the threshold for the p-values. This table shows the labs where the ratings had p-values less than 0.05. In other words, in these labs, the differences in ratings between students using PBS and PBNo are statistically significant. To understand the table, let's take the first two rows as an example. They show the rating of helpfulness of the environment in lab F and the mean ratings given by students using PBS and PBNo. You may observe that the mean rating from students using PBS is higher than that from students using PBNo. In fact, this pattern is true for all of the lab item pairs in this table. Know that we collected such ratings from labs F, W, and D, and for helpfulness, this pattern exists in all of the labs. For difficulty, statistical significance only exists in lab D, the last lab in the study. The results lead to our third takeaway. We found that PBS was consistently rated as more helpful for understanding the lab, and we found that although PBS was rated just as easy to use as PBNo in the earlier labs, PBS was rated as easier to use later in the term. In labs W and D, we also asked the students to compare PBS to PBNo. We first asked them to compare which helped them learn the lab material better. The stacked bar chart shows the result. The visual intuition is that the dark blue and light blue bars are the ones leaning towards PBS, and the pink and red bars are the ones leaning toward PBNo. The gray bars are neutral. We can see that uh, dark blue and light blue are the dominant colors in this graph. In other words, students generally found PBS more helpful. We also asked students which of the environments they preferred and this bar chart shows the result. Similarly, the dark blue and light blue bars are the ones leaning towards PBS. And we can see that dark blue and light blue are, again, the dominant colors in this graph. That is to say, students generally preferred PBS. Our takeaway from the ratings is the following. We found that regardless of the environment used in each lab, Students rated PBS as more helpful and preferable. And although I didn't show it to you in this presentation, it turns out that students who used PBS right before the surveys gave higher ratings. And details could be found in our paper. Finally, we conducted a thematic analysis on students' open-ended feedback in the experience surveys to find out common themes in the feedback.
in order to better understand their attitudes toward projection boxes, or PBS. We found four major themes. Students generally found PBS to be helpful for programming, but they also found using PBS sometimes frustrating. Students had mixed views upon how PBS could assist with learning, and there were quite a few suggestions for the future of projection boxes. In conclusion, we conducted a study where students used a live programming environment called projection boxes in a natural classroom setting, and we explored its impact. While we found that projection boxes had no observable effect on test scores, we found that students completed some tasks faster using projection boxes. We also found that students rated the live programming environment as preferable and more helpful for their learning. We recognized that students' perceptions of the tool did not match their performance on post-lab tests. So, as a closing remark, we call for more work to better measure the impact of live programming in CS1 education. Thank you.